Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas is out of the hospital after being ho treated for an infection. His release, though, comes a day after the January 6th committee revealed it has 29 text messages between his wife and former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows. Virginia, who goes by Ginny Thomas, is a conservative activist and the wife of Clarence Thomas. Her text messages show that she pressed Meadows to overturn the 2020 election. Just three days after the election, Thomas sent this message. Do not concede. It takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. Referring to former uh, President Donald Trump. And on November 24th, when Biden had officially been declared the winner, she sent this. I can't see Americans swallowing the obvious fraud. Just going w with one more thing, no freaking consequences. The whole coup and now this. We just gave, gave to people wanting Biden to be appointed. And we just caved to people wanting Biden to be appointed. Many of us can't continue the GOP charade. And our panel is back with me to discuss. There are many, many more of messages like that, including some of the most outlandish conspiracy theories. Um, but the issue here is about Clarence Thomas. Mm -hmm. He was the only Supreme Court justice to dissent when Trump tried to get his documents uh, to not be uh, turned over to the January 6th committee. And now the question is, should he have recused? But in the future, what does the court do? Yeah, I mean, it's long been known that Jimmy Tom Thomas is a conservative activist, but this is certainly raising more eyebrows about whether they've had conversations about the overturning of the election and what, what kind of conflict of interest this poses for Justice Thomas. We have already uh, heard many progressives saying that he needs to recuse himself so far. This has all fallen along party lines, but it certainly raises questions about these conflicts of interest, especially at a time when Supreme Court justices typically go to such lengths to try to avoid any impropriety. And these text messages uh, raise serious questions about uh, the discussions that they've had relating to these issues. And right. to the Supreme Court does not have the same binding rules that are in place for federal judges when it comes to recusal, but there are norms. Mm. And in addition to um, Clarence Thomas being the lone dissent in the case you mentioned, um, when the majority uh, rejected Trump's efforts to withhold documents from the January 6th panel, he also dissented in early 2021 when the court rejected a handful of cases uh, related to the election that had been filed by former President Trump and his allies. And so I think there are a lot of court watchdogs who are saying, look, no justice is responsible for the political views of his or her spouse, but there are certainly some conflict of interest questions to be raised here, especially when we're just seeing dozens of messages that floated false claims about the election and really pressed uh, Mark Meadows, Trump's former chief of staff, to to help overturn the election. I mean, this is real, um, you know, anti-democratic stuff on the part of Ginny Thomas. And one of the reasons people are talking about, okay, Clarence Thomas, how much did he know? What, how involved was his wife in all of this? She has one text message that says, thank you, needed that. This is to Mark Meadows. This plus a conversation with my best friend just now, I will try to keep holding on. America is worth it. <laughs> It's the mention of the best friend part that I think also has people raising their eyebrows. Um, uh, uh, just, just about you know how, how much overlap is there here, and and not to mention, I it, it bears repeating, she's trying to overturn a, a free and fair election here. It, it's a bit of a tricky balance, uh, a tricky line when you're when you can claim or say that you are not talking to your husband about work about about these works, but you're still messaging the chief of staff. Uh, not just messaging uh, messages that very much indicate overturning an, uh, an electoral process, but also navigating the White House at that time to some of the prominent figures that we know were, were also key in that process to try and overturn the election, such as Sidney Powell, such as uh, uh, a former commentator for Infowars as well. Um, so it's, it's not just as, you know, the communication, the messaging here. But it's also some of the navigating of, hey, I mean, include Sydney here. Right. Include Sydney well, here, here's process. one of those messages. She says, just forwarded your, e your Gmail and email I sent to Jared this morning. Sydney Powell and improved coordination now will help the cavalry come and fraud exposed and America saved. Jared, no last name, but believed to be potentially a reference to J uh, Jared Kushner, the, the president's son-in-law, uh, and Sidney Powell push pushing this person who even people in the White House wanted to mm -hmm. get out of this process, uh, raises some questions, though, about the January 6th committee. Mm -hmm. Do they need to get more from Ginny Thomas about all of this? 
Yeah, that's certainly one of the next big questions is will they try to subpoena Jim, Jenny Thomas after seeing these messages? Of course, these are just 29 messages. Who else was she texting? Were there more text messages between her and Meadows going forward or it, 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 since those right. had evolved? But yeah, those are going to be big questions about whether the committee wants to hear directly from her uh, about her involvement or, or thinking and discussions on overturning the election. It's a question of how involved was she potentially. Um, you know, she does say this. She she has acknowledged she was at the January 6th mm -hmm. uh, rally uh, at the Ellipse. Uh, she says she was not at the Capitol. So be it. She says this to Mark Meadows. We are living through what feels like the end of America. Most of us are disgusted with the VP and are in listening mode to see where to fight with our teams. Those who attack the Capitol are not representative of our great teams of patriots for Donald J. Trump. Amazing times, the end of liberty. It, she, she's talking about teams. Uh, uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions in all of this, but I think if you're the January 6th committee, you want to know more. You want to know more, you want to know who in Trump's inner circle was in communication with the organizers of the insurrection, how much they knew, when did they know it. And also it's important to turn out, to point out, as you said, this is about overturning a free and fair election. And it's also part of uh, Trump's strategy as he tries to re-enter the political space to create doubts about the integrity of future elections. So it's not just about what happened in the past, right. it's also about what happens in the future. Very much still active. Thank you for all for being here today.